Okay, so we've gone through, we've developed our kinematics, we've described our motion in terms of the undeformed or reference configuration and our current or deformed configuration. We define displacements with respect to those configurations and we came up with uh, two tensors that are important, the displacement gradient tensor and the deformation gradient tensor. So from there we want to go to strain. So the deformation gradient has both um, st relative stretch and relative rotation. But strain, we only care about the stretch, right? A rigid body rotation of our, of our sample doesn't introduce any strain, but it does introduce a, um, a deformation, right? If I take a tensile sample and spin it 90 degrees, I've changed the positions of everything. I've even changed the relative positions. Um, but I haven't introduced any any strain in my material. Uh, so we want something that's invariant to rotations. And we have to be careful, though, because local rotations in the material do produce a strain, right? If I take a a sheet of metal, right, and I imagine spinning, swirling some material in the center of that sheet, I am going to be uh, stretching the material to do that. So the the um, rotation that we're talking about here is rigid body rotation. It's not rotation, uh, rotation gradients or shear gradients within our sample. So to get at the strain, let's introduce two vectors, All right? So we'll, we'll make a point in our material. We'll introduce two points, P and Q. And in the reference configuration, the vector that points from P to Q is this vector uh, dxa. Those same two points in the deformed configuration, lowercase p and lowercase q, we're going to, uh, they have a vector dxi, right? And the displacement that links them is u. For strain, what I care about is how much longer or shorter is dxi than dxa. So we'll take the change in the Cartesian, the magnitude squared, right? The length squared of these two vectors. All right? And this is basically just the, the, um, the algebra, right? That of how we derive the strain. Um, I really don't think that this is super important. Go through it if you're interested, but from an understanding point of view, I want you to understand that the strain captures the change in length of these two, uh, of these vectors, the relative change in length of those vectors. So in going through this, we introduced two tensors, the green deformation tensor, sometimes called the Cauchy green tensor, sometimes called, um, uh, mistakenly called a finger tensor by the, the finger tensor by some people. Um, but basically what this is, is this is a deformation gradient. This is a deformation gradient. So it's, it's really a square of a deformation gradient, right? So F transpose F is how we define uh, this green deformation tensor. And it shows up right here um, in our derivation. But so F is not a symmetric tensor. But if we take a, a non-symmetric tensor transpose times a, a non-symmetric tensor, um, this C, this is going to be a symmetric tensor, right? F transpose F 
has to be C. And this is, you can think of this as the square, for all practical purposes, the square of the deformation gradient. And then the strain is uh, one half C minus identity, right? And this is just the definition of the strain. Um, I don't want to get, there's, don't want to get too, um, too formal with it. But again, the important point to remember is our strain tells us information about the relative change of these lengths. Uh, line, these the line, vectors that link two points in uh, our material, right? And uh, we can also go back and go again through the algebra, and we can work out the strain in terms of the uh, deformation gradients. Um, so we end up, we've got uh, a deformation gradient, the deformation gradient, and then a product of deformation gradients. So a, a, a term that's a uh, higher order term that's squared, right? And this will be uh, important of how we define a, a small strain in, in just a little bit. But again, this is just the algebra. It's not really important for you to, to work through it. Um, you know, it's useful to do it once, but I don't want, you're not going to have to be able to reproduce this on the exam. I want you just to be familiar with, with the definitions that I can write strain in terms of the deformation gradient. I can re, re, write the strain with return, re, with respect to the, uh, displacement gradient as well with respect to the individual displacements. Okay. We're going to work this example in class. Okay, back to this idea of stretch and rotation, right? Rotation doesn't cause, cause strain. Uh, so our F, our, our total deformation gradient includes both stretching the material and a rotation of the material. Now, we can decompose that into a... Uh, rotation first we spin our body and then we stretch it right spin first then stretch or we can stretch first and then spin so this is called the polar decomposition this is a way of um, splitting the the deformation gradient into a r a rotation part so this has to be an orthogonal tensor, just like our transformation. This is a proper rotation. So it's orthogonal. So R transpose equals R inverse. And U, which is our, or V, which are uh, uh, stretches. Right? Now, The polar decomposition um, is important for a couple reasons. So, first off, from a purely computational region, C, this Cauchy Green deformation tensor, is U squared, right? U times U equals C. Um, so, strain is one half U squared minus I, one half C minus I, uh, F transpose F minus i, so u squared is f transpose f. Um, but more importantly, right, since the rotation part doesn't cause strain, all, all, any definition that we create for a strain tensor has to be a function solely of u. Specifically, we can get a little more formal, any strain tensor has to be a function of the eigenvalues, uh, uh, eigenvectors of u. But that's that's a little, little over 
So, but we can use this to define other strains, just like we had um, use this this notion to define other strains, just like we had other stresses, right? That was the equivalent of engineering and um, true Cauchy was true stress, and uh, we introduced a Piola Kirchhoff stress that was uh, um, engineering engineering stress, All right? We can introduce other tra other strain measures, right? The BO strain, right? So instead of uh, one half u squared minus i, right? It's just u minus i. The Hanke strain, which is the equivalent of the the true strain of the log strain, it's just the log the natural log of our stretch tensor. And then the equivalent of the Lagrange strain the finite strain tensor in an Eulerian framework right this would be like a strain that you would use in uh, fluid dynamics is the Almansi strain which instead of one half u squared minus i it's one half i minus inverse u squared um, but these are just different ways of defining strain and then as a final little bit I mentioned small strain theory before so here's how we write our strain with respect to our displacement gradients if we assume that all of these displacements are small right that means the displacement gradients also have to be small and when you square something small it gets even smaller Right? So if we imagine elastic strains where this is on the order of less than 10 to the minus 3. So we'll say the order of, we'll say 5 times 10 to the minus 4. Right? 5 times 10 to the, or 10 to the minus 4 times 10 to the minus 4 is 10 to the minus 8. Right? We can ignore that when our displacements are this small. Um, so small strain is just... one half dang it there's error here Let's put a one half in there right now uh is just one half of the these the sum of these displacement gradients so it's symmetric right it's uh yeah and that's uh the end thanks for slogging through it with me